Hello and welcome to the hardest room makeover I have ever attempted in my entire life. Today we are going to be turning this living room into a Gryffindor common room. I got a lot of the inspiration from photos and videos I actually took when I went to the Harry Potter Warner Brothers tour in London and I took photos of all of the different decor items that they have, all of the furniture, and I specifically went looking for some of the items that I had seen there. So you're probably asking yourself, how are you gonna turn this into a Gryffindor common room? I'm glad you asked. So my plan for this room is I am going to be putting the famous medieval tapestry on the back of the wall that you see in the Gryffindor common room. You are able to buy that on Amazon, so I did purchase one. I also plan on putting up a stone wall because I want it to resemble the inside of a castle, and I am going to be doing that stone wall myself, meaning um, I'm making it out of paper and I'm painting it. The next thing that I have to do to bring this room together is I have to thrift some new furniture. I have some furniture pieces that do work in this room, like my beautiful suitcase side table, but the other stuff doesn't really work. I don't want it to feel like you're walking into a Harry Potter fan's room. I want it to feel like you're walking into the actual Gryffindor common room, if that makes sense. I feel like there is a very distinct difference between like Harry Potter fan's room and Hogwarts castle. The first thing that I need to do is I need to start on the stone wall. I know it's going to take me the longest time. I don't even know if it's gonna turn out, but fingers crossed, it does. <laughs> the first thing I did was measure the width and height of the accent wall, so that way I knew how many pieces of paper I needed to cut out to fit perfectly across. Then I cut out some stone shapes using this cardstock paper I purchased from Walmart for about $6. Once I cut the stones evenly, I laid them out on the ground with the dimensions, so that way I knew how many more pieces I needed to cut. Once I finally had them all laid out and it looked perfect, I numbered the backs of them based on what row they were in. And this will come in handy when I paint them so I know where they go on the wall. I cut out 100 pieces of paper and I'm going to be painting every single one of these to kind of resemble a castle wall. And I, after doing the math of the paper cost and the spray paint and the other paint and the time I put into this, it actually would have been more efficient to just buy a stone wall backdrop, but it's kind of too late for me to do that because I'm already here and I'm already committed and I already cut out all of this paper and I, I put too much time into it. So we're gonna do it this way. I am already through one can of spray paint and I did not finish even half. I'm gonna attempt to paint the rest which just sounds stupid saying it out loud. I don't even have enough paint to paint the rest, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna lay all these out and I'm just gonna take a sponge and go over all of them randomly to add some details using a raw umber brown, some black and white. And that's pretty much it. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Just a little update, it's actually turning out a lot better than I thought. So if anyone from Disney is watching, please hire me to be a Disney Imagineer. <laughs> but yeah, it's actually, uh, it's looking more like stone. It's looking more how I imagined, and it's gonna take me some time to paint all these, but I think in the end it's actually going to be worth it doing it this way, because I'm not throwing these away, I'm going to keep these, I'm going to reuse them, and it's kind of relaxing. I don't know, like painting to me is very relaxing, so this, it's not like a chore, it's just fun. That took three hours. Let me show you what it looks like now. It looks a thousand times better and I'm actually very happy with how it's turned out so far. I think once they're all together it will look pretty good. 
this is definitely going to give a nice illusion of a castle wall. Now that we have completed the stone wall, let me show you some of the items that I have thrifted. So the first items that I thrifted, and I got these a while ago, and uh, they're just gonna be used for throw blankets or maybe tapestry if I need some extra. We're gonna see what happens. First is this piece right here. It has two different colors on each side and I just felt that it matched the color palette well. I could use it as a throw blanket, I could put it over a table, I could put it on the wall as a tapestry. This is a wool blanket that I got. I intend to use this as a throw blanket and it also has really pretty tassels on the end. I felt it fit the vibe very, very well. Both of these items I purchased from the Goodwill bins and they cost me about probably around 50 cents for both. Next, I got this floor lamp. It feels like it's 100% brass. It's extremely heavy and it has these amazing little details on it and it just looked like something that would be in the Hogwarts castle. So I got this for $10 from Deseret Industries, which is like the Goodwill of Utah. Next, I got this amazing coat hanger and it reminded me of a Victorian coat hanger. I thought it was incredibly beautiful. I've always wanted one, but I thought it would be a really interesting item to have in the room because I could display my robes on it, my sweaters on it. Next, I found this oil lamp that has been converted into an electrical lamp. This is definitely one of the best items I've ever found. Very rare find. How did I lock out? I don't know. I randomly passed this yard sale one day and I just decided to pull over and go check and they had this. It was the only one. So I did fix it a little bit. I had to glue some things back onto it, but it works and that's all you need. You just need it to work. But the reason I wanted this specifically is because when I was looking at my Harry Potter photos, I noticed that obviously Hogwarts, they don't use electricity, they have candlelight. So oil lamps are very commonly seen in the Hogwarts castle. And I felt like, okay, I need at least one oil lamp to really give off that, you know, candlelight vibe. And this is my baby. Oh, and I got it for $20. $20. Next, I thrifted these wall sconce candle taper holders. I have always wanted these for such a long time. I think they go so well with any aesthetic, but they're just beautiful. And I got them for $10. They are 100% brass. They're super heavy and they're a little smaller than I wanted originally, but you cannot beat it for $10. Although I did have to drive two hours to get them. So. I don't know if that makes it $10. It probably makes it much more with the gas. But then to my surprise, I ended up finding two more at the thrift store for $1.50 for both. Not each, both. I got them for $1.50. Now it's not solid brass, it's super light and they do look a bit art deco. As you can see, it has that fan design on top, which I think is really cool, but I like the size of them. You see how they're a lot taller so I, I had to get them because you cannot beat them for this price and it only holds one candle but that's okay the next thing I got was this giant wall candle holder I'm not going to be using it for candles I wanted it to kind of resemble the Hogwarts castle windows and I felt like if you looked at this you would get it you would, you would understand what I was trying to do. So I did backlight this already. I'll be showing that later in the video, but I'm really excited to see this on the wall and see it come to life. I, <laughs> these are the things I get excited about, putting up a window. I mean, I don't know. Next, I got this big picture frame for $5 to hold a Hogwarts portrait. And I was going to do a DIY where I painted a portrait and put it in here, but because I'm doing the stone wall, I decided no, I can't do that, <laughs> it's too much time. I thrifted this side table for $5 from a website that's very similar to Craigslist. And lastly, I ended up finding this wall divider for 15. It's solid wood and I felt like this might be a good replacement to kind of separate the room because I have an open floor plan and it also fits the color palette really well. It brings in more dark wood, kind of gives it a castle vibe. I did buy some items, but I will be showing you those as I put them up and talk about them then. But I wanted to show you my thrifted stuff individually. Now it's time to clear out the entire room because I really want to change the layout of this room. I mean, 
We'll see how much we can actually change. Given that I use a projector on the right side of the living room, that wall has to stay entirely clear so that way we can watch movies and play video games, which means that the left side of the living room is kind of where our furniture has to be. It does limit me a little bit, but I'm going to try to change it the best I can. The tapestry I got doesn't cover this entire wall. It's a little short, so I think to kind of take up more space, I'm gonna put the bookshelf flush against the wall instead of at an angle in the corner, which originally I didn't wanna do because I like it being at an angle, but I think I have to do it. To hang up this tapestry, I used some weather strip nails. I prefer to use these for something that's lighter just because it makes a really small hole and it's easy to cover up. This tapestry I did purchase from Amazon. It was $39, a really good price for something this size. <laughs> But because I only purchased one, I did have to use that thrifted tapestry scarf that I showed you earlier in the video to hide the rest of the wall. And the color is not perfect, but it still has red. Now it's time to move around the furniture for the next couple of hours until I can figure out the best layout. And since I'm indecisive, this is a thousand times harder for me. And sometimes I'll draw it up on my Procreate and I will move around the pieces on there. But I decided I needed to see it and physically do it. So enjoy the sped up version of me doing this until 2 a.m. I am going to lay out all of the stones I painted to see how much of the wall it's going to cover because I did not do all of them. Once I finished laying the stone, I backlit my window using fairy lights that I purchased from Amazon. I think they were $14. And I created a barrier at the bottom of the window so that way light did not leak out of it. So my plan is to put up my little window candle decor item that I thrifted and then put all of the stone around it just to make sure that that is centered. That has to be the main focus. <laughs> okay, it looks really cool. Right? Right? To put up the stones, all I did was use tape. I looking back now I should have gotten sticky tack because it would have been much easier but I love to make things difficult for myself if you couldn't tell by watching this video I ended up taping all four corners of the square putting it up cutting accordingly to make everything fit perfectly this took me around two two hours two and a half hours to do It actually ended up working out pretty well given the amount of stones that I was able to paint. I could have had more definitely but it would have just made it go a lot higher which would have been cool but you know sitting down in a chair I'm not staring up to the ceiling so it was fine the way it was. But once I laid all of the stones out, that is when I came back in with those details. So I just drew some black lines and I blended it out and done done and done. Good morning. Stayed up till about two working on the wall and kind of contemplating where I'm putting everything and what's missing in the room. What is my plan for the day? My plan is to put this picture in its frame. The print that I bought, which I thought was perfect because it's a girl reading 
and I just imagined a Harry Potter portrait where, you know how they're always doing their own thing? Well, this just made so much sense. But the thing is, it has a white border and I did not know it had a white border prior to getting it. So I'm going to have to try to cover that up because this print was the largest one I could find that had a picture I felt was usable and it does not fit in the frame. The next thing I have to do is change up my pillowcases. I got these pillowcases from Amazon. I got two of them for $12 and I really liked them because it has a nice texture and I felt like the texture would look good on my chairs because my chairs are very like soft velvet and this was kind of like a texturized velvet, which I thought was cool. To create the black border, I used my cardstock paper once again. I ended up using this entire thing, so it was definitely worth the $6 I spent on it. And I cut out a bunch of pieces, making them the exact same size, and just taped them inside of the picture frame and then laid the print on top of it. Next, to give the frame more of a Hogwarts appeal, I decided to paint it with this folk art gold paint. And I, I just brushed this paint on super lightly. I found that spray painting, even with the different tones of gold spray paint, it does not look as realistic compared to a gold item in my household, at least. So I found that this paint brushed on top of something looks way more realistic than the spray paint, which is why I did it. I also decided to paint my armillary, which is something that you would commonly see in Dumbledore's office or the Ravenclaw common room or just anywhere in the Hogwarts castle. And as you can tell, look how realistic this gold paint looks. Then I felt that I needed to attempt some sort of backdrop within my window to make it appear as if I was in the Hogwarts castle and I was looking out the window. So again, using that cardstock paper, I I taped together a sort of canvas that fit into the window and I attempted to paint a view of the castle from the Gryffindor common room. I was not planning on making this look amazing by any means. I just wanted it to give the illusion of looking out a window, you know, so there's not a lot of detail that's going into this piece. It's really just a silhouette, some clouds, a moon, and the lights from the Hogwarts castle. That's literally it. I do think, you know, maybe if I had bought a print of some sort that was able to fit, it would have looked cool. But I think given the time I spent on this project, which was about 35 minutes, it was really good. And this is how it ended up turning out. Now for a brief interruption from the sponsor of today's video, which is me. Hi. So I am a space artist. I've been doing art for over a decade and that's actually where this YouTube channel came from was because I wanted to create on a much larger scale. And I don't really talk about my space art on here, but I figured, you know what, I might as well. So if you are interested in space or if you're interested in art, I would absolutely love your support and uh, I will link all of my information below. Now back to the video. Now we are getting to the last steps of finishing this room and that is just adding in all of those items that I thrifted and putting up all the things on the walls like my wall sconce candle holders and putting out things that are from the Harry Potter films just as like an ode to Harry Potter. So if someone came into the room and they maybe thought, oh, this kind of gives the vibe of the common room, they would see the Marauders map and they would say, oh, yeah, she is a fan. And I also wanted lots of books around stacked because if you've ever been to Harry Potter world or if you've ever been to a tour, you will notice that they stack books everywhere. Therefore, I wanted to do the same. 
I wanted to create a potion making section on top of my suitcase just to add something extra. I did this by using a bunch of bottles that were given to me and some that I thrifted and I just placed them on this silver tray. This candle holder I thrifted for 25 cents and I got these flameless battery operated remote control candles from Amazon. They are one of the best purchases because candle tapers always freak me out to light because they drip. And now I can enjoy that lighting all the time and not worry about the house burning down. So it's great. Another thing you will notice about the Gryffindor common room is the ground is fully covered in medallion rugs. I got this one for $15. It was the only one they had in this color. I don't think the print is perfect. The other small one I also got from Marshalls for $12 and the large one was from Wayfair for $65. Next it was time to pull out all of my Gryffindor clothing, my wands, all of that good stuff. And as a kind of last minute decision, I decided to keep my giant palm tree to try to create more of a closed off room space instead of it being open. And this palm tree, I thrifted for $12. Now to add in my last lamp, I thrifted this one from a garage sale. I love the lion detail because it resembles Gryffindor. And I thought the lampshade just didn't really fit the vibe. It was just too white. So I switched it out for another lampshade that I had that worked really well with the color palette of this room and it gave off much better warm toned lighting. I did get these flickering light bulbs from Amazon, but they were too big to fit in any of my lamps. So I got these instead from Target for $9 a piece and I will say they're a bit too orange for my liking. They don't look realistic at all, but the flicker is really nice. But I definitely would not recommend the other one unless you have a light that does not have a lampshade. I have lots of Harry Potter film books and they come with replicated items inside of them. So I found these candy boxes from Honey Dukes. I thought it would be so cute to display them to make it look like an actively used room. Okay, the room is officially done. And I just wanna show you the before one more time before we move into what this room has become, which is the Gryffindor common room. And okay, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs>
Okay, we're done. The room is done, it is complete, and I'm in love. My final thoughts on this room, hmm. Well, I think the only thing I would have done differently is I would have invested in a foam stone wall instead of a 2D one. And I did end up looking up the cost of that after I made this one, because I was curious if that would have been cheaper. Just the foam itself would have been $70, and that does not include all the stuff that it takes to make the stone. So I do plan on doing something like that in the future when I can actually keep it. But because I'm moving again, this is perfect for me because I can just pack it down into a book and I can reuse it for another makeover in the future. Or if I just want to kind of add a castle accent wall to my room, or I really don't know, but I can always reuse it. That being said though, the stone wall is my favorite wall in the whole makeover just because it just really gives that castle feeling and another thing i'm super happy about is the window with the hogwarts castle in the distance it's like not the best painting it gives the illusion still and that's what we were going for i also think that the lighting just adds something extra special all in all this makeover ended up costing me around 200 dollars, which i think isn't bad some of the items I already owned, so I'm not accounting for those. I'm just accounting for the things that I have recently purchased to add to the room to make it what it is. Like the picture frames, the, the lamps, the lighting, that stuff. So I guess that is it. I hope you guys liked this makeover and it gave you some inspiration when it comes to decorating. Some people think of Harry Potter around autumn, but I'm more of like a Harry Potter all year type of person. <laughs> yeah, so either way, any whenever you decide to watch this, I hope that uh, it inspires you to maybe decorate your room and do something similar. If you have any questions about this makeover that I did not answer here, please let me know in the comments and I will get back to you and let me know your thoughts. Let me know what your favorite part of this makeover was. And I guess that's it. I'm going to enjoy my Gryffindor common room now and I will see you in the next one.